It's a great day to worship together our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from wherever you may be watching. We hope you and your family will sing with us, listen to the spoken word, and feel as if you are right here at Inglewood United Methodist Church. So sit back, get ready, and welcome to God's kingdom. May God bless you all. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I'm here in cloudy southern Ohio with my mother who has gone through some uh, very serious uh, surgical procedures and uh, am spending just a few days with her. Um, and I am I'm probably on my way back even as this service is being uh, broadcast. But uh, my mom is okay. She's going to have to have some further surgery. But we do appreciate your prayers for Stella Willis. Uh, and we will be letting you know more about that in, in future days. Uh, during this physical distancing season we're in because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we plan to do much more communicating through social media like this and the internet. Today's worship service is our first attempt at doing that and we appreciate your participation with you with us today we want you to know that God is with all of us at EUMC and all people around the world uh, during this very difficult time very dark time for a lot of folks all activities at the church have been canceled until the end of March and the church office will be open from 830 to noon Monday through Friday uh, and there will be an offering plate on the counter for you uh, to give suggestions, uh, give some feedback, offer your offering or your tithe check. And we do appreciate your faithful giving during this time, especially during this time. Uh, you may also give through using PayPal on our website. Go to www.inglewoodumc.net and click the Give tab and then click Donate Now. Uh, there are simple instructions as to how that's done when you get to that place. We thank you for your faithful giving. We thank you for giving anything you can during this time uh, to help the church stay on mission. And uh, this is a time when people especially need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we will continue to do that in our, our modified ways. If you need a pastor during this time, please call the church. 941-474-5588 to get the phone number of the pastor that's on call and you may then call that pastor directly at the end of the month we will reassess with the guidance of the authorities and of our bishop and uh, we will make further decisions at that time I have a few announcements before we get underway with our worship today first of all the town hall meeting scheduled for tomorrow 
is one of the canceled events, which means it will not be even live streamed. We hope to get you that information in the near future as to when that will be rescheduled. Our annual community Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 11th has also been canceled and we will still distribute Easter baskets and a do-it-yourself egg hunt kit as a drive-through service. On the following dates and times, families can drive up and they will receive age-appropriate baskets and plastic eggs and an assortment of different candies uh, for the Easter basket. Those times are these. Please put these down. Thursday, April 2nd, 5 p.m. through 7.30 p.m. Friday, April 3rd, 5 p.m. through 7.30 p.m. Saturday, April 4th, 9 a.m. to noon. And this event is open to the public. So invite your friends, your neighbors. We do uh, want to serve our community even during this difficult time. We are planning creative options if necessary for Holy Week beginning April 5th. Some more information to come on our website and next Sunday. And as we enter into worship, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this season of the year. We ask that you would be with our brothers and sisters who hurt as a result of this uh, virus and for all those being affected in various ways. Be with our service now as we attempt to worship you and attempt to lift up your name because you draw us unto yourself when we do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. about a virus, aren't they? What's that? So it's, that's a big, that's a big, uh, drum. Yeah, there's drums, there's all kinds of musical instruments up there. I'm, I love it. I'm glad you like it, that's cool. So anyway, look over here at Miss Susie. So the grown-ups are all worried about the germs because there's this virus. So I know that we've been washing our hands a lot, and when we sneeze, we use tissues in our arms and we use hand sanitizer, right? To keep clean so we don't spread germs. Yeah. So I thought I would talk to you guys about germs because God <coughs> made good germs. And then there's germs that are allowed to be here that aren't so good. And those are the ones that we're worried about. I have germs. We all have germs. No. So let's come over here. Come on down. And I want to show you guys how a cool experiment for us. Oh. All right. And don't touch it just yet. But what I'm going to have you do is just put your finger in there and pull it out. And then don't touch your face, okay? We're not supposed to touch our face. Because there's germs in there. Put your finger in and pull it out. Go ahead, pull it out, and you'll see the germs on your finger. See them? No. Don't, don't rub them. Just hold it on your finger. Go ahead, put your finger in there. you got to hurry up if you want to do it. Put your finger in. Oh, you got germs, right? Okay, now use another finger and put a different finger, not the same finger, a different finger in here. What? They're like slime. This is soap, and the soap kills the germs, and you're going to see how. All right? Oh, it's got germs. Yeah, put, there you go. Then put that, the finger with the soap on it in that dish, and watch what happens. <gasps> Look, all the germs went away. Did you see? Okay, don't put that in your mouth or your face. Here. <laughs> Did you see what happened? All the germs separated from the soap. That's what soap does. Soap well, makes all the germs go away. This is hand sanitizer. And this kills the germs, too. And then the tissues we use to stop our germs from our face. What? I know. It's important right now. Make sure you don't get that pepper, that ger those germs, in your face, okay? Good job. I love that. Very good job. 
So God allows bad germs to be here too because bad germs make us stronger. And our God wants us to be good and strong. But sometimes the bad germs make a lot of people sick and that's what's happening right now. But we don't need to worry about that. We just need to wash our hands, okay? Will you guys sit back down up there and let's say a prayer. We have to wash our hands and we have to be careful not to like touch each other a whole lot right now, but everything's okay, all right? Do you guys feel like everything's okay? Yeah. Good, I'm really glad. We love that family. That was fun, wasn't it? All right, so now we know that how important soap is to get rid of the germs. Ready to say a prayer? Okay, one, two, three. Dear Father, thank you for your love. We thank you for the good germs. And we ask for protection from the bad germs. Please watch over us and bless our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Very good.
Good morning. Uh, these past days have been filled with uh, change and newness, and here we are with a growing pandemic of fear in the world around us. Inside Out, uh, the title actually comes from a Disney movie that uh, came out a few years back. A movie that gave us an inside look at all the emotions going on inside of an 11-year-old girl named Riley, who's trying her best to adapt to all the change in her life that is happening as a result from moving from Minnesota to San Francisco with her mom and dad. The bottom line is this. What happens on the outside, her behavior is being driven by what is happening on the inside. This is true of our lives, too, our stories, too. When our church did planning a few months back for this season, we had no idea that the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, would be the issue that it is in our world today. I read this statement from a doctor, one who said this, I've been at this for 20 years, seeing sick patients on a daily basis. I'm not scared of COVID-19. I am rightly concerned for the welfare of those who are elderly, in frail health, or disenfranchised who stand to suffer most. What I'm scared about is the loss of reason and the wave of fear that has induced the masses of society into a spell-binding spiral of panic. Mostly, I'm scared about what message we're telling our kids when faced with a threat instead of reason, rationality, and open-mindedness. We're telling them to panic, be fearful, suspicious, reactionary, and self-interested. Our own behaviors and fight-for-yourself-above-all-else attitude could prove disastrous. I implore you all, temper fear with reason, panic with patience, and uncertainty with education. Facts, not fear. Clean hands, open hearts, our, our children will thank us for it. Another doctor, a psychiatrist on staff at John Hopkins Medical School, recommends addressing our fear by putting the virus in perspective, specifically in relation to flu statistics in the recent past, do what you can to prepare, don't overdo preparation. Limit your exposure to the news. Be wary of where you get information and don't isolate. So we're calling this virus a pandemic. In other words, it's a disease that is spreading over a large part of the world. That's true. But it seems that there's even a greater pandemic that is actually spreading faster than the coronavirus. So what is the real antidote for all of this fear that seems to be alive and well, living just below the surface in most of us? If you have your Bible uh, with you this morning, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 14. You might want to keep it close and follow along. I, I want us to see a bit of the context so that we're all on the same page with the story as we look at it today. God's people Israel had been slaves in Egypt. God brings plagues. Pharaoh finally decides to, to let God's people go. Shortly after that, they leave Egypt. Pharaoh gets angry, changes his mind, and comes after them. And so, so here we go, Exodus chapter 14, beginning with verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and saw there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, why is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. God's people have made it to the Red Sea. So there is the sea on one side and Pharaoh's army closing in quickly on the other side. In other words, they're trapped. There's no way out. How do they respond? One word. Fear. They're terrified and they start griping to Moses, their leader. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Now it's interesting here that their minds so quickly returned to Egypt, but not to the very last thing that happened before they were released as slaves in Egypt. What was that? God showed up. This little thing called Passover. God, God killed the firstborn son of every household in Egypt, saved them and their families, and released them from slavery. Here it is again. All God has done often gets lost in what he's not currently doing. Are you in the midst of battling fear this morning? Whatever the source of that fear is, it would serve each of us really well to start with this question. Whose power and strength am I really leaning into? What's your answer today? I know how I feel. What a journey I've had walking along the years with Jesus. I've come a long way in my journey. I've learned so much of this stuff the hard way. There are times that I feel and sometimes I say, I, I think I have a doctorate from the University of Hard Knocks. When I first arrived in my first appointment way up in the panhandle of Texas, a little city named Borger in 1972, I had five church members and two of them were illiterate. I thought, oh God, why are you sending me here? I agreed with my wife Mary that God wanted us to come here, but, but I was afraid. I thought I wasn't where I ought to be. God reminded me again and again and again and again that he had sent me there, that I was called to give my all. So there was a belief that if we were faithful, got out there and gave all that we had, our talent, our time, our gifting, our leadership, our worth ethic, and ability, everything would be fine. And so that's what we did. We worked hard, hand in hand with the Methodists in that city. They would give us the bus, their little bus, and we'd drive and pick up kids and bring them to programs, knock on doors, held revivals, and 18 months later found ourselves headed to one of my cherished spots in ministry, leaving a ministry for others who came behind us. We cannot rely on our own strength. You see, it takes his leading, guiding direction. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit when we face fear. I would come from a large church, one where the organ rolled, the piano sang, the timbrels played, the hallelujah sounded, and here I was loving and preaching, being faithful to five and believing and through submission to God, he filled that place and Mary and I saw many, saw many souls kneel at the altar, were born again, who were won into his kingdom. So the Bible says that God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't say that. So Pastor Don, what's your takeaway from that this morning? When we're facing fear, do we just kick back, sit still, do nothing, and let God deal with it? No. A thousand times no. No. We must act on the leading of God. Am I telling you that in light of our recent scare, you shouldn't be buying toilet paper? <laughs> no. No. I'm telling you to leave some for someone else, for goodness sake. More importantly... I'm telling you that in moments of fear like this, when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, nowhere to turn, to pause and to ask yourself the question, whose power and strength am I really leaning into right now? 
It's not by our might, but by his strength and power that he provides peace. A peace that we say passes all understanding. Peace, perfect peace, far beyond all understanding. Peace, perfect peace, left with us by Christ our Lord. Peace, perfect peace, through eternity's expanding. Peace, perfect peace. Peace, perfect peace. Let's look again into the scripture beginning at verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. Aren't there easier and quicker ways for God to deal with the problem here? I mean, God could just drop a fireball from the sky and vaporize Pharaoh and his entire army. In just one second, the entire problem goes away. While God's way of walking through the sea with the water raised on each side would be a scenic, spectacular view, I don't think it's what any one of them or any one of us would choose. What they really want is what we want to. We want whatever it is that is scaring us to be totally and completely gone. Here's the thing. God is after something deeper here. So the second question as we stare down fear in our lives, ask yourself this question. Am I thinking short term and small story? If I really think about my fear, what is it? That mountain challenge or problem right in front of me as I live in a story that revolves around who? Around me? So what are you most afraid of, of, of as you listen to me this morning? Could it be corona? Most likely it's something else. Something that hits closer home for you today. Some of us are afraid of where our marriage is headed. Others, relationships, our jobs, our incomes, our futures, the path our kids are traveling, our elderly parents, maybe they're away in another state. I could go on and on and on. How will we pay our bills? What does the future hold? Will I get sick? This diagnosis being this lonely feeling alone for the rest of my life. All kinds of answers to these questions, aren't there? Sometimes all we can see is the tragedy right in front of us. And that's not uncommon. In the midst of the fear, the invisible enemy is the master of keeping the story small and keeping us thinking short term. But would you this morning hear Jesus speak to you? Dear friend, whose strength are you leaning into today? He wants you to know he's still on the throne. So let's go back to this moment with the people of Israel as they walk through the sea with the water raised high on both sides. What does God's way of dealing with the challenge they are facing and the fear that comes with that require that their way wouldn't have? Oh, I think I know the answer. It requires them to trust God every step of the way. Simply trusting every day, trusting him along life's way. Even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus, that is all. God's response doesn't eliminate the source of their fear. Instead, he requires them to walk into it and through it. What do they have to lean into as they do that? Oh, I tell you, the answer this morning is him. 
What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Are you seeing this? Every one of us wrestles with that, that which is going on the inside of us. God is there. He cares, he knows, he understands. We're never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. We're not alone. Here's where we often get hung up. Our focus tends to be on what God is doing for us. His focus is always on what he is doing in us. I have a dear Christian friend who has grown in the Lord. He loves Jesus with all of his heart. He knows him. He has a deep relationship with him. I received a note the other night from him in one that I'll cherish forever, for he's one that I love in Christ. And this is what he shared with me. Don, sadly, I've learned that my time of grace has almost ended and a crown of glory awaits. An x-ray taken for totally unrelated issues showed pulmonary nodules and a CT scan showed widespread metastasis from an unknown primary. I will do some testing next week but it seems that treatment options will be few or none. This comes as a surprise to me as well. But all the days ordained for me were written in his book before the first one came to me. Wow, of course that is the word of God found in Psalms. He goes on to say, I'll focus on enjoying family and things I like while getting my act together. I'm in excellent spirits and anxiously awaiting what lies ahead after moving on. I look forward to greeting you at the gate one day. Man, phew, you can't even begin to ponder what a note like that will do to you, for you, in you, and through you. I have several who are waiting for me. The Bible calls it a great cloud of witnesses. One not too long ago, maybe 10 years, called me and said, Don, I'm on my deathbed. I'm ready to go. And when I see Jesus, I'm going to ask him to give you a mansion right next to me. Man, am I looking forward to seeing Jane again. Fear thou not, for I'll be with thee. I will still thy pilot be. Never mind the tossing billows. Take my hand and trust in me. God, by allowing things to be harder in the short term, builds a, a resiliency and strength in the face of fear that serves us in the long term. Let's get back to the story. So God opens up a way for his people, but the truth is that Pharaoh's army, the source of their fear, is still there, still bearing down and gaining ground on them. So let's pick it up there and finish beginning, beginning at verse 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the seas so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. The people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. So finally, when the source of all their fear is gone, they what? They put their trust in God. That's great. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Sound familiar? <laughs> it does to me. Think about this story. These people have been carrying this escalating fear since the very first time they spotted Pharaoh and his army pursuing them way off in the distance. They are absolutely terrified about something that never really touches them, affects them, never even becomes really reality for them at all. 
Isn't it true? Isn't that really the story of so many moments in our lives too? We say that courage is not the absence of fear, but action in the midst of fear. Courage is, I refuse to allow my fear to paralyze me. And courage is a good thing, it's a great thing. While that's true, as we stare down our fears, here's what we most need to walk away with from this today. The answer isn't more courage. It's more faith. So you see, here's our challenge. Muscles that never get exercised, worked out, and broken down never get stronger. Most of us would prefer to skip exercise altogether. God tells us without faith it is impossible to please him. If that's true, the kindest thing that he could actually do for us is walk with us through things that actually help us exercise it and build it. There's a song, Do It Again. God, I've seen you move. You move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. Isn't it great when that happens? Of course it is. I pray and this thing that has me totally and completely freaked out and scared is, is just gone. God is able to do that and sometimes he does and it's awesome and it's beautiful. Here's my question. What about when that doesn't happen? That's where faith comes in, doesn't it? See, faith is not the removal of or the absence of mountains in my life. Faith is my response when this thing that makes me anxious, that makes me angry, that scares the living ooh out of me, that I want and need to move in my life to go away, it doesn't move, it doesn't change at all. So what do we do with that? It's why I love the next lyric to that song. You made a way when there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. That's the lyric that I think we need to lean on most this morning. See, removing it is not the only way that God makes a way. The truth in all of our lives is that sometimes God doesn't remove it. But he always provides a way to get me around it, over it, and through it. And from the depths of my soul this morning, because of that, there rings a hallelujah. One of the joys of my life has been to observe my children when walking through storms drawn their inner faith. I'm so grateful to God that Philip, Danya, and Nyssa, because of their application of the word, see courage in whatever life throws at them. I believe it's knowing that whatever life throws at you, God's got you in the palm of his hand. So in faith, believing, we move on. We see it up close and personal in the life of Jesus. He knew that life on this earth would lead him to the cross. But as he sits there on the eve of that happening in the Garden of Gethsemane, fear comes over him. It grips him. He's walked past many people dying on Roman crosses along the roadside during his lifetime. It's a brutal and, and a terrifying way to die. And in his fear, he cries out to his father, Father, can we change the plan? But he doesn't stop there. What does he say next? Even if you don't, Father, I'm good. Your will, not my will, be done. Either way, Jesus, I'm all in. In the midst of my fear, I'm leaning into you. I trust you. I'm okay. It's well with me. Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Let us lean into that this morning. Right where you are, will you join me in prayer? 
sitting around the table in your living room on your sofa. Just take a moment and bow your head and close your eyes so we can close out all distractions around. And will you pray, Lord Jesus, this morning I come to you just as I am. I place my trust fully in you. Give me the faith that I so desire. Take away my fear. Let me remember today that I'm never alone. You care for me, you love for me, and I'm safe in your arms. Help me to call, to go out, to love, to help, to care for those who are near me. Take care of and encourage all the vulnerable and scared people out there in the world around us. Answer prayer, Lord, as we come to you this morning. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you.